Hey everybody, welcome to the Hoops Post Up. And today we have a special topic. You may have heard a certain player named Carmelo Anthony just got signed with the Blazers and now he's back. Wasn't too long before he made a reappearance, right? We're here to talk about Melo as an all time player. You may have seen our uh, first episode where we talked about the top 50 all time NBA players and where they ranked. We're going to see where does Melo fit in all time. He is definitely hot topic right now, so we want to talk about where he made his stand in the NBA, and he's playing again, so let's talk about it. Let's do, let's see where he fits in. All right, guys, before we get to it, let me introduce us. I'm Pierre. This is Velma, my beautiful wife. And we are not just huge NBA fans. We are obsessive NBA fans. We watch, love, play, everything basketball. Um, and so we're here every week. We're going to talk about all sorts of things. Don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell, and follow us on all social media. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook. And we are on Instagram. We're everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere that basketball can be talked about, and especially, of course, YouTube. So hit that subscribe button. We talk about fantasy. We talk about uh, current news. We talk about all time players and games, and we talk about 2K20. Aha. We play. We don't just talk about it. We play. We play. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about Carmelo Anthony. Um, again, not yet buried. Uh, he's still in the league for how long? We'll see. Um, but. I think it's fair to say that no matter what happens this year, his legacy is what it's going to be, right? I don't think the Blazers are going to give him his championship that he's kind of wanted so long. Um, so where does he fall? Because he's a player that's been talked about a lot, right? Obviously a prolific scorer. Um, but do, how do you feel overall as far as, you know, where does he fit in among, dare I say, the all-time greats? Well, when I think about Carmelo Anthony's career – I, it falls a little short for me um, with his ability and with his uh, athleticism. I think mm. his personality. To me, what, the thing about Melo is I think his the market he plays in played a big factor in um, his reputation. And I think maybe he got a little overinflated, right? The fact that he played New York. He's a New York guy. Oh, come on, we know New York-based media. He played for There's New York for like eight seasons, didn't he? New York, yeah. right. And they, coming out of college from Syracuse, right? And I think that a lot of the hype around him was not quite justified, right? Yeah, he can score, but I think his influence on the game maybe is a little bit overboom. All right, so when we think about Melo and we're thinking of, I'm going back to our 50 all-time greatest, right? Mm -hmm. And where he would fall in that category or in those large group of Hall of Famers, right? Mm -hmm. So where do you think he stands? Well, here's my question. Hmm. Does he fit into the top 50? I mean, we just assume, I think a lot of people, okay, but we can assume he's automatically going to be a Hall of Famer. Is he going to be in the Hall of Fame? I think that's pretty obvious, right? Yeah, I okay. think he'll make it into the Hall of Fame. You know, obviously he's an offensive player, right? He's got the numbers. <laughs> he He's going to make the Hall of Fame, but is he automatically top 50 all-time player? I think a lot of people just assume, yeah, he is because, you know, when you think about the big names, NBA Right, you think about the obvious ones, and I'm not talking about the young stars. I'm talking about the guys who have been in the league for ten or plus years. Right? Okay, so obviously Dwayne Wade just retired. You got to talk about Wade first. Uh, you got LeBron, right? You have all the players that have been in the league and kind of carried it through the past decade plus. Nowitzki, who just retired, um, and we kind of lump Melo in with them. But is he at that level? I don't think he's at that level. And I, like I said, I think there was a lot of conflict that pulled him back from playing what he probably could have been. Well, I think the main conflict with him is he didn't realize maybe uh, at times that basketball is a two-way game. So there's offense and there's defense. He's not too familiar with that part. Um, oh, so my gosh. So I think, I think yeah, I think he had a few uh, turnovers. A lot of turnovers, too. Now, okay, so let's look. Okay, to be fair with him, we're going to look at both sides. Let's talk about the good and the bad. And um, I think there might be some ugly, oh, ugly. thrown in there, <laughs> right? 
All right, so when we're looking at his overall points in his career, right, he was 19th all time with 24 points on average, right? Pretty good. You can say he's a top 20 scorer, right? Talk about per game average. Uh, we, you could throw in his total points scored. Uh, but again, a lot of those total, here's where it gets a little misleading. We talk about career numbers, total points, total turnovers. Well, a lot of that just has to do with total games, total minutes played, right? You have a long career, you're going to score more than, you know, some guys who may have been better on a per game basis. Right. Uh, maybe more effective. Okay, so points per game, top 20 overall, more than Dwayne Wade, more than Charles Barkley, uh, more than a lot of big name players that we know of. So that's his calling card there, right? He's a scorer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I think about that, I think of how Dwayne Wade made an impact for his team, right? Mm -hmm. He had championships. He was able to develop players around him. I see Melo as being a single person, not a team player. And I'm glad you said that because that's the thing. And you hit it right on the head. Wade is one of those players, not to single him out, but he was also a very good passer, right? Ball handler, defender, known for uh, being one of the top shot blocking guards, um, steals. So he made his teammates better. And that's obviously one of the reasons why Got a finals MVP. They won. Championships before LeBron <laughs> got there. Thank you. Yeah. Finals champion. Yeah. Um, so when you think of Melo, does he score a lot? Yeah. Does he make the players around him or did he make the players around him better? I don't think so. That's debatable. Now, obviously not a ball handler, not a point guard or anything like that. But still, have that effect, right? Draw the defender and then dish to the open player, right? Let somebody else take a shot. Um that's not him, right? It's about his numbers. It's and about his, his numbers sometimes. A little too much. All right, so let's talk about look. Let's look at his rebounds. Okay, so rebounds, top seventy-five of all time. Mm -hmm. Now again, look. Say, so well, that's total numbers, career. You know, we just talked about padding stats, but because he's got a lot. When of you're comparing time. them, but... when you're comparing them, he has more than Michael Jordan. And Magic. And those are guys. You, Jordan had a pretty long career. Of course, he could have played longer if he didn't take that little break. But still, um, you know, Magic Johnson, the guy who, remember, notoriously played center in the finals. Uh, a big mm -hmm. guard. Kind of basically almost the same size, Melo. Um, so, the, besides just being a prolific scorer, Melo was a pretty good rebounder, too. Yeah. So, the fact that he wasn't a center or a power forward, top 75 all time, I think that carries some weight. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at is what happened in his career. He was a 10-time All-Star and a 6-time All-NBA okay. player. So that definitely carries some weight. The fact that he was, on a pretty consistent basis, recognized as one of the top players in the league. right? And this was, again, switching conferences, switching teams. Uh, started out with Denver, we know. Then, of course, with the Knicks. Um, and that's where he is mostly known for. But, um, yeah, this is a guy who would regularly, among his peers, was considered one of the best, right? At the very least a top 20, if not top 10 player throughout, you know, I'd say at least a decade. Right. Not that long ago in 2013, he was a scoring champ. All right. Now, only did it one time. Uh, again, a lot of good players also playing in this era, so it can't be expected that he was going to... There was no real uh, one player that stood out in terms of just scoring. Of course, you could say LeBron, of course, dominated lately, but mm -hmm. uh, in terms of just pure scoring, um, yeah, I mean, he had a season, right? That was the kind of the pinnacle of his, of his career. Now, here's the thing. Okay, what kind of rounds out his profile here? And you can see there, only 11 players in NBA history can say that they've got... 25,000 wow, 25, points, points. 6,900 mm -hmm. rebounds, mm -hmm. and... It's the 3,100 3, assists. assists. You don't see him on the assist leaderboards, of course, but he's, again, not a guard, not a guy yeah. who handled the ball that much. Uh, we don't think of him as a that's, passer. That's surprising. <laughs> but he, he had enough assists. So you could say he's in rare company, right? One of 11 players to have that much in terms of, you know, total numbers. Well, give me the bad. What is the bad? I'm glad you asked. So... Now, that all sounds pretty good. Right there, you can say, make a case. He's, you know, he's got to be At top least 50 top 50, We know right? he's going to be a Hall of Famer top 50, right? All right, so here we have the bad. Oh, my goodness. 13th all time with, what? Phil Gold's missed. He missed 11,000 
224 sure shots. So you can't wow. just dismiss it. Yeah, he made a lot of shots, but he also missed a lot of shots. Uh, now, again, you can kind of dismiss it. I didn't even put it on here, turnovers, because, yes, he's up there with turnovers. But if you look at the leaders and field goals missed and uh, turnovers and those stats, uh, you also see Michael Jordan. You see Will Chamberlain. You see all those guys uh, who just played a ton and uh, had the highest usage rates of anybody because they should have because they were the best players in the league. Yeah. Um, but again, don't let it be said that you know he's not a player who had his fair share of misses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the kicker. And this is where we kind of all know it, but here are the numbers that really drive the point home. We're talking about defense, 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 right? So here we go. 209th all time with 1272 percentage points. That is his defensive win share. Now, win share is a relatively wow. newer stat. Uh, we can talk about the offensive side and the defensive side. We already know he's a, a plus in the offensive side. But I just want you to kind of just soak that in. His defensive win share, all time rank, not even in the top 200. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't just not that good on defense. He's a liability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that especially goes to defensive ratings. Look at his career defensive rating there. Yes, that's what I was going to talk about. Defensive rating, 108 per 100 possessions. Are you kidding me? Not so good. So you can wow. look at it. It's kind of two sides of the same coin, um, except the problem is that the numbers aren't supposed to match. Right? You went lower <laughs> on defense and higher on offense. His offense and defensive ratings they match, Virtually right? They're the 108. Same. Oh my gosh. Okay, so a little bit over 100, fine, but 108, that is not good. And then just to drive it all home, his box plus minus. There it goes. Box plus minus, 245th of all time. And if I could show you the chart, you would see that there's not a whole lot more that goes below 245. This It doesn't even go to 300. Okay, so we're talking about qualified players, right? 245th. So that makes him uh, about the same as Wesley Matthews. Wow. Tell me about Wesley Matthews. <laughs> uh, you know who actually was right above him? <laughs> Mario Ely. Mario. Mad Dog. Oh. Mad Dog Mario. Mario. Anyways. Ellie. Mario he was Ellie. A decent player. Uh, Spurs, would you call him a top 50? No, no. 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 So again, no. okay, so we're just picking on defense. But again, you can't just dismiss that. This is, the game goes both ways. And the last thing there, I, I don't think that anybody who knows Melo uh, needs to be reminded, no rings, mm -hmm. no championships. He wasn't even in any of the finals appearances. Didn't, like, none at all. Didn't, didn't take his team. Wow. Now, I'm... That's a little depressing. Personally, yeah, if you're Melo. Well, when you think when he comes, he comes out of college, right? Mm-hmm. Right? He comes out of college with who? With a, well, having won a championship, right? Having, carrying his team as a freshman. Right. Expecting big things. But he comes out with LeBron. He comes out with Dwayne Wade. He comes out with Chris Bosch, right? The big three. All these big guys who have made a name for themselves in this league. And won championships. And he's fallen short. Right. Now, I hate, especially we talk about games like, uh, in like football or baseball. Or you know, didn't win a ring, couldn't take his team there. Maybe a quarterback, you can say that about, but hey, you're saying like, it's, it was his fault. You know, this is the guy who, no, it's, it's a team a, game. It's a, it's a team sport. But that's it the thing, he didn't play his, as a team. But with, in basketball, there's more often than any other sport, one guy makes a difference. The, one guy makes all the difference, right? There's only five on the court and we know the NBA is a, it's a star guided league. Mm -hmm. So one player can take his team to the promised land. Yeah. And you know what? Melo yeah. just didn't have the opportunity. He just didn't do it. Yeah. Let's talk about that draft class because I think that he gets almost too credit, too much credit for being part of this great draft class, right? He came out with LeBron and Wade, and we kind of just lumped them all together. Mm -hmm. But you can't say, but oh, here's LeBron and here's Melo. But they thought he was going to be that player. They did. And do some you people remember? still like, view him that way. Oh That's what gosh. I don't get because. Okay, so let me tell you also, you want to be associated with that draft class? Okay, that top five produced four Hall of Famers, right? Great players, obviously LeBron, Bosh, Wade, um, all heat players. Um, and then Melo, and then there's Darker Milicic. Mm -hmm. We already know about that. Let me tell you who else is part of that draft class. Let's see how many Hall of Famers there. Chris Kamen, right? The caveman. Mm -hmm. Did a decent, mm -hmm. decent career. But, mm -hmm. uh, Kirk Heinrich, mm -hmm. he was all right. Uh, TJ Ford. Mike Sweetney, uh, Jarvis Hayes, 
Mikhail Petrus, uh, Nick Collison, eh, he was okay, uh, off the bench. Marcus Banks, Luke Ridnar, Reese Gaines, Troy Bell, Zarko Kabartin. Uh, I see even my Boris. My Boris is there, and my Boris got a championship. Boris, yeah, right? David West. Fr France national team. French Those are the team. only, yeah. Boris yeah. Yao is the next best player on that entire list, mm -hmm. except for maybe uh, Leandro Barbosa. But there are a lot oh, of Barbosa. no names in yeah. that draft class, and it is front loaded. And I think he gets again too much credit for me because number one, by association of being part of that top five, this historic draft class, which isn't as great as everybody thinks, and the fact that he was in New York, mm -hmm. I think that the media plays a big part in our perception of how good a player is. And so again, just saying, not yeah. that he's not a great player, but. Not as great as people think. I know. So now, it's time for the ugly. Saving this for last. And it has to be mentioned because, again, we're, we're being fair. We're looking at both sides here. But we have to objectively look at what do the stats say? What do the numbers say as far as how Mello falls? So here it is. VORP, what does that mean? Value over replacement player, which is just what it sounds like. How important are you uh, relative to Joe Schmo off the bench, right? Just guy who can come in and fit in the NBA but not be a star player so here's his relative value career-wise okay so first instinct when you look at this list you notice okay Carmelo is 120 yeah, 120 okay that's not bad look at some of the players around him you got guys like James Worthy great player uh, you have a little farther up there you see Possible huge, uh, future Hall of Famers, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, really good players, Anthony Davis. Um, who else do you see, though? Bo what? Outlaw. <laughs> Joaquin Noah. Joaquin Noah. Uh, Sorry. Joaquin Noah. PJ Brown. You remember Michael Finley? Oh, Michael Finley. He's a good player. He was good. Okay, is he a Hall of Famer? I think he won a championship. <laughs> it doesn't make him a Hall of Fame player. No. Uh, Josh Smith? <laughs> Don't think so. How important are these guys relative? Now, if you notice, well, well Kawhi Leonard, he's probably going to be a Hall of Fame. Okay, but his career is pretty short so far. That number is going to shoot oh, way up. Of course. He's not going to end over up there. Time. Yeah. So when you talk about relative value, you have to realize this defense matters and shots missed and all of those things that might negatively affect your team, even if they don't show up on the stat sheet, right? And for me, this is the same reason why a guy like, I'm going to piss some people off here, James Harden is a little bit overrated because, yeah, you can score 50 points. If you take 50 shots, it's not as hard to do. Yeah, I know. I don't know. play defense. <laughs> you're going to shoot that many shots. You're not helping your teammates. You know what? It doesn't show up always uh, in the stat sheet as a negative. You see the point totals. Houston's actually win. doing a little bit They're doing better. all right so far. No, but what about like the playoffs? Is like a guy second. like Harding going to win a championship? No, it'll never happen. I don't think it's going to happen you the same reason it did for Melo. You have to have defense in the playoffs. Okay, so bottom line, where does Melo rank? I would have put him at 48. I still would have put him in the top 50. I would if Pau Gasol's there and a couple of other players. I, I would put him at 48. Okay, so sneaking into the top 50. His numbers are comparable to Kevin Garnett, and Kevin Garnett is like 16 on this list. Now, why do you think, remember we talked about this in our episode, why is Garnett so high? Because of the championship. Yeah, Went to Boston. Won championships. Right? He helped him win so a championship. So he falls closer to my Iceman, George Gervin. Now, Gervin is a guy, he, right, where did he mm -hmm. win a ranking? And he was in the top 50. He was kind of just barely in there. Yeah, where I think was he, he was like 45. Okay. Somewhere around there. Now, again, that's a subjective list, right? This isn't like the end-all, be-all. This I is a Bleacher Report thing. Um, it's a pretty good list, though. Okay, so you think he's comparable to Ice? Well, okay, I, that's I think Ice had like 26 points, mm -hmm. like on average, for his career. That's and pretty close to Carmelo, Mello. I think he's 24. Yeah. I think that's what we said, it's 24. So it's close. Assists were similar as yeah. well. So there you go. Okay. So the numbers statistically are pretty close to the Iceman. Okay. That does sound fair. 
No, no. don't even get me started that they're the same person. Absolutely not. Mm, oh, no. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> um, all right. So to me, and looking through all these stats and just thinking about where might he wind up, the best comp for me is a guy like Alex English, who, if you remember, old school viewers like us, uh, Alex English played mainly for the Nuggets for a while. He was a good player, right? Eight-time All-Star. Uh, he was a scoring champ one time, just like Melo. Uh, he played a ton of minutes, was a really reliable guy, just like Melo. He racked up a lot of points, but guess what? His defensive rating for his career, 110. Remember Melo? 108. Yeah. So very similar numbers, right? Now, Alex English, Hall of Famer, rightfully so. Carmelo will be a Hall of Famer, rightfully mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. But to me, not top 50. Oh, I put him honestly, wow. honestly closer to like I'd say top ninety five. No, 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 okay, not that low. <laughs> Seventy maybe. Wow. Because there's some players we talked about that didn't quite make the cut. I would put ahead of him. Mm -hmm. So I got him maybe around 70, 75, top seventy five, not top fifty. Sorry, wow. doesn't do it for me. What do you think, guys? So hit us up with some comments and tell us where do you rank Melo as of right now? Again. We're going to assume he's not going to take Portland to the promised land this year, right? You don't no, think that's going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going right. to be a big disappointment. If it does, we'll redo all this and I'll, I'll put him in the top 30. Flat. I'll put him in the top 10 if he can take Portland <laughs> to a championship this year. Um, no. But yeah, we'll definitely let us know. Where do you think Melo ranks? Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. We appreciate all of you. Make sure you comment below, interact with us, and like we said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, notification bell, because we're always putting content out there. Absolutely, for the people. All right, thanks, guys. Peace and love. Peace.